time, Juneteenth becoming a national holiday has sparked a conversation about symbolism. Some say the legislation doesn't answer the cries for justice and racial equality. And tonight, local leaders say it's time for officials to step up. Rallies, flags, and words of healing. So today represents freedom. God bless the freedom, not just of African Americans, but of everyone that lives in the great United States of America. All to remember the 250,000 enslaved Africans who finally learned they were free on June 19th, 1865, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. More than 150 years later, this day of black independence has become a national holiday. Uh, it's about time that acknowledgement is made on behalf of African American people who have uh, struggled in this country. Co-chair of the T. Thomas Fortune Foundation, Gilda Rogers, calls the new federal law significant, but she and others say the holiday is not the justice they marched, cried, and bled for. We ask for reparations. We ask for freedom. We ask for peace. Leader of Black Lives Matter, Elizabeth Kason Little, calling the move nothing more than a symbol. You know, they want to celebrate Juneteenth being a national holiday, but we're still not teaching our children their raw aggregate history in schools. They're still being taught that Christopher Columbus discovered America, not indigenous people. They're not being taught about what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I think if you commemorate, say, Juneteenth, without understanding the ongoing work associated with Juneteenth, then I think you celebrate too soon. Ryan Haygood heads the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice. He says truly commemorating the end of slavery starts with repairing the racial disparities it's left behind, especially in the Garden State. The individual net wealth for black adults is a staggering $179. Haygood believes in order to address these systemic inequalities, a reparations task force is necessary. Beginning to make people whole who provided the free labor upon which this country's wealth is based and upon which our white brothers and sisters disproportionately have seen advantages. Activists looking to local lawmakers to take more action. We need ultimately our representatives to legislate on a mandate in, in full defense of us, not just the talk, but we need them to walk that walk as well. We have to have a seat at the table, like Shirley Chisholm said. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Rogers tells me in the end she's optimistic, believing change is possible.